Today, is a, we're going to talk about strength for the day, which is for every day. Strength for the day. And we'll be reading. It'll be up there. Uh, it'll be out of Deuteronomy 33, 25. Uh, we'll be there in a, in a moment. But, you know, has there been times over the years that you've desperately needed prayer and you've had somebody pray for you? I can remember this, so many of these things. But I remember throughout the years, you know, Lori has come up and I've asked her for prayer. And she, she'll pray and she'll hug me and she'll say something. And there was one year she put her hand up here. And she prayed for me and uh, to be strengthened, you know, with her hand on my head. And to walk out and to do and deliver and for God to be with me. And to, to, be a, to build people up and to not be a stumbling block. Well, my hair started falling out then. That was where her hand was. So I'm not sure if she put that hand up there on purpose. <laughs> I went out and did what I had to do, but I'm doing it with less hair now. And still uh, hopefully as effective. But you know, somebody asked me the other day, they said, uh, why don't you just shave it off? I said, you know what? I don't want to do, I don't want to look more like the rock than I already do. I don't appreciate that. <laughs> you know, I don't want people to get confused when I come up to witness to them and be going, <laughs> yeah, I guess if I, I would have that in common with him, right? <laughs> we probably have some numbers the same on, but not, you know, they probably don't start the same though. And I'll tell you, there are so many times when we need strength. Uh, I can think of, uh, you know, things, and, and I can laugh, I can smile, and I can think of tough times in my life that I'm like, Lord, I desperately need you right now. I desperately need your strength. And I'll tell you, 20 years ago, uh, this April, it's actual 12th and April 13th, and uh, I can remember it like it was yesterday. And I thought of the scripture, uh, I was talking about with Babs this morning, and we're like, man, it's just like scripture, things that go. It's like, like it says, it's like a vapor, right? My mom is a, my mother's in the hospital with cancer doing bad. My grandma's at home and her life is failing because she's doing bad. At the same exact time, I'm driving back and forth between places. And I get the call and, they're, and I'm at the hospital and they're like, it looks like grandma's getting ready to go. You know, and I lived with my grandma until I got married for a long time. Uh, so I was very close to my grandmother and my, my mother uh, and had a, you know, like a lot of people, you know, you just, you love your parents, right? Uh, so I get the call even though I'm at the hospital with mom and the grandma's getting ready to pass away, and, I, and I'm in between, and I get the call that grandma passed away. And, you know, you, you always want to be there. You know, I tried to make it and got there, and, you know, you lay there, you know, you sit there, and you, you cry, and you talk for the other relatives are there, and then they're like, it looks like mom's getting ready to go. And so I get back, you know, and it's probably about eight hours later. It's probably really less, but, you know, they tried to revive her for a long time. And, and I remember that cuff on her arm that was her blood pressure. And we were sitting there praying intently all the time because it would go every five minutes and it would show and the blood pressure drop. Five minutes later, it would drop. Five so we just watched it drop and watched my mom deteriorate. And so eight hours later, my mom passed away. And I can assure you, I needed strength from the power of the Holy Spirit because I was devastated, as many people are when they lose their parents. Uh, to lose two of the, the greatest women that I've ever met in my life was very painful. And, and I remember I cried so long and was awake for 48 hours, you know, dealing with that and up. And, and I had muscle spasms in my eyes for years. They were just twitching and stuff like that. <laughs> it, it was tough, man. You know, Lori would be walking across the room thinking I'm winking at her like, oh. <laughs> that guy is consistent. He is winking again. You know, and, somebody, and I, the doctor asked me something. I said, man, these things are twitching like crazy. They said, well, we can stick a needle right under your eye. And get rid of it, I said, oh, I think I'm good with the muscle spasms. <laughs> I did not take the needle. And then somebody says, you know, caffeine doesn't help it. And I'm like, <laughs> what? So I got off of caffeine. And, you know, and of course, you get rested too after a long time. But, you know, and then the uh, muscle spasms went away. Uh, caffeine is good, but it sure has, <laughs> sure can be problems, right? So, so I really asked the Lord to help me because I tell you what, I was in pain for a long time. I really was. And I tell you what, my greatest memories is I would, uh, often I would get home and Lori would see after a while, she'd say, you know what, I can tell you miss your mom and your grandma because mom was taking care of grandma out at where I grew up out in Jonestown. And she'd say, you need to go out there and spend the night. So I'd go spend the night and I'd get to catch up and uh, visit and all that stuff. And you know, one of the greatest memories I have uh, always is I'd get out there about midnight because I'd get off 3 to 11. I worked that lovely shift with the sheriff's department. So I'd get out there about midnight. My mom would take my tea out of the freezer and sit it there where it was chilled after sitting there about 15 minutes, you know, just, just a little bit icy. And I talked to her off and on in her life about the Lord. And I always prayed for the strength to help me. And, you know, you, you don't want to torment people and bring it up. But, so I hadn't brought it up in years. Seven years before she passed away, she's laying in there on this sofa that's around in, in, the, in, the, in Grandma's house. And her, her stomach is very swollen from cirrhosis of the liver. 
And I remember her patting me on the head, just trying to make me feel good, saying, yeah, oh, okay, yeah, I, I accept. I'm, and she didn't mean it. And, and you know, I've, so seven years later, almost exactly, uh, I go over there that night at midnight, and I said, Mom, I said something to her. I brought it up out of the blue. I said something about the Lord. She goes, Son, I'm ready. And I was like, Oh, my goodness, I need some strength. I feel pressured, <laughs> you know. So brought out, got out my little card that I used to carry at the time because I didn't have to memorize nothing that way. It's laminated. Well, let's just read a couple of them and talk. Gave her heart to the Lord. Three days later, she found out she had cancer. Two weeks later, she's with the King of Kings in heaven. Isn't that an amazing story? Thank you, Lord, for the strength to do. My brother always looks like he wants to cry when he's not here today. He had to work out of town. When he, he says, thank you for doing that. And I'm like, oh, I'm grateful I did it too. <laughs> So I needed strength for that. Amen? Amen. Hmm. Here's my scripture, uh, Deuteronomy 33, 25, like I said. May the bolts of your gates of iron and bronze, may, uh, may your strength match your length of your days. Did I say that right? The bolts of your gates be of iron and bronze. May your strength match the length of your days. This was to Asher, and there's particularly one son that was the favorite, and uh, when you look at a lot of this scripture, so uh, I thought of a gate that's bolted, right? Well, Lori thought of the gate that's bolted when we were talking about it, you know, and, and the gates. But you know what? There's no padlock on this gate. We have full access all the time to the power of the Holy Spirit to ask him. And I, I, thought, of one, I thought of some locks. I'd like to keep things locked. And there's no way to keep it locked. We have complete access uh, to it all the time. Isn't that awesome? So uh, he delivered their people about, they're about to enter promise, the promised land. You know, and they've been delivered. We all know the story from Egypt and how bad and good all that went. They were delivered by the blood of the Lamb on the Passover over the doors, right? We've been delivered by the blood of the Lamb because of Jesus Christ, because of His death, burial, and resurrection, because He is our Savior, because we've given our heart to Him, because He's Lord and Savior, because He's both in our lives, means we're forever in the kingdom. They were uh, uh, also delivered when they went through safely through the Red Sea, right? I tell you what, if you're running and you're in the front and you're running to that, it doesn't look good. And, you know, it's like we're getting ready to die. It's getting ready to cover us up. This looks horrible. It looks like there's no chance for a miracle, right? Totally like they're just thinking we're not going to make it. Because you know they were whining the whole time before that, right? And so it only got worse when they're running to their death, it looked like, right? And then God opens the Red Sea and they make it through it and the enemy gets pummeled. Amen? So in our, in our lives, the Red Sea will open. The enemy will be pummeled in the long scheme of things. Could it be tomorrow? It could be. Could your debt be pummeled and uh, be taken care of tomorrow? It could be. Could your uh, marriage be restored to a greater heights than you've ever thought and seen in your life tomorrow or today? It could be. You know what we got to do when we're running to that Red Sea, when we're running to get our miracle? Is we got to have an open heart, be an open vessel to change, to receive in Jesus' name. You know what I want? I want the greatest marriage I could ever have in the history of marriages. Not to compare, but to do exactly what Jesus told me to do. To be exactly the man that God called me to be and exalt and lift up my wife and love and adore my kids and not exasperate them when that 15 and 16 year old girls make me upset. And they do. You know what I told them several times? I said, you know what? I did not realize how intelligent you were and how smart I am not. You didn't say that right grammarly. I said, see, that's what I'm talking about right there. I didn't realize how smart they were and how much I had, uh, uh, how much I had to learn. But I continually get reminded, thank you, God, that I got a ways to go. You know what I continually get reminded? Is I have to have love, patience, and be kind. And remember that they are teen machines and going through stuff that, that some of it I went through, they're girls, so some of it I haven't. Different era, a few generations later, some of it I've gone through a lot that I haven't. Right? All the bad stuff that, that, you know, our TV used to go at the end of the night, right? At midnight, you couldn't sneak in there and watch nothing that's bad for you because you'd go, all right, dude, it's going off the air, whatever they said, right? Now you can walk around. That stuff's everywhere now, right? If you ain't got it, your friend's got it. If you can't watch this, you're going to watch it with them probably. You got the access to do it. But that's where we pray about something to consume and come over our children that will convict them to do the right thing, to walk with the Lord. So what an amazing prophecy from Prophet Eric for those that have kids and teens or whatever you're going through, right? Amen? Yeah, what an encouraging word from the Lord. Yep. <laughs> what an awesome, awesome word. And you know, so those pictures of what we're going through is a metaphor, a picture for us through the Red Sea or the Passover. 
God says he is with us. And I like that a lot. You know, they, they got their breakthrough before they entered the promised land. They got their miracles before the promised land, right? We have the promised land, but as long as we hang in there, we can have hard times like they did. We will reap our reward, and the promised land will be there. Amen? Amen. For all of us. <clears throat> I hope you're there with me in the promised land, because that's where I'm planning on going. Amen? And I mean that in the most humble, <laughs> humble way. Don't I, Mother? <laughs> we were talking about humble on the way in. <laughs> We're bragging on each other all the way in, you know, talking about great things. And then I remember that Andy Griffith episode, right? When they come to, they come to interview Barney Fife. Y'all remember him? And they go, well, what would you use to describe you and Andy? And he's like, humble. I believe humble describes us best, right? <laughs> there could be a false humble, right? <laughs> but God wants us to also enjoy life. I enjoy my ride, my time with She's Babs, y'all. She's mother to some of us. She's mother to me. Moses, uh, first of all, the last words from Moses to his people. These are the last words. They're words of warning and words of promise. New Testament, continual warnings. Apostle Paul writing continual warnings. And then there's promises. Be careful. Watch out. And I will tell you this. The enemy is well aware of, and I'll just use the number, the two or three things that you have a problem with that trip you up, man. You'd be all tripping out. The two or three things that, that uh, you have a problem with, whatever that is, you're doing better for a while, then you go back. Man, I got a whole good month. Then you go back, right? And if you know what your weakness is, why go back and even entertain it? Why go in that area, right? But the enemy is aware of that, so there's times that you think, you know what, I think I got this, and you find out you don't. Why? Because you weren't truly delivered. You didn't fully commit. It's no different for me. If I'm battling, it's because I didn't fully commit. I want to co fully commit to him. You know what happens when I fully commit to him, really? All honesty, that means I am 100% not only fully committed to him, fully committed to my, my leadership, and fully committed to my, to my spouse and the kingdom and Liberty Hill and Leander and the lost everywhere. I am committed to them. I get out of the David Joyner world and I get into his world to do what my calling is, what our calling is, what his calling is. To, you know, it's not always fun and games, right? There is a sacrifice sometimes, you know, to do things like that. You know, the ladies over at Liberty Manor, they say, thank you for the sacrifice. I said, ma'am, I do not feel like it's a sacrifice. You know, that's where I go to Liberty Manor, the 55 and up. Most of them are up. Yeah. I think there's one that's 50, there's a couple that's 60, there's several that's 70, there's some that are mid-80s and 89, there's one that's 92 or 95, she changes it on me every week. <laughs> she says she's 29, 39, and I have to get over to her close, and, I, and I, <laughs> I say, hello, young lady, I have to say it pretty loud. She's like, oh, I'm sorry, I don't know if everybody heard that. <laughs> that's what she says. And she goes, yeah, <laughs> that'll make you their favorite speaker right there, right? Anything after that is good. But it feels, it's exciting to me to go talk to them. It's like I got all these grandmas hugging and kissing on me and all that good stuff. You know, and they feel different. They feel revived. They feel like they're getting the word of God. Had one tell me that she's like 89. She has struggled with uh, being at peace her whole walk. I don't know, but when they're 89, that's a long time. That's a long time. She said, thank you for the peace you've brought me that I didn't know I could feel. That's because of him, right? And I tell you what, if you meet and hang out with me, you know I'm not bragging on me, but that's exciting to me. I love that. I love that so much to be able to do that. And like I said, it's, it's always open at 1230 every Sunday. Anybody that wants to come, feel free to come and hang out and have, have, have had some come do that. They're ready for the big meal again, to get together again. You know, we're booked for a while, so it won't be any time real quick. Moses prepares them for the promised land. Here are some of the assurances to the tribe of Asher. We're the tribe of Jesus, right? We're the tribe of the king, so this is for us. And here is my first point. God knows all our days. He knows them all. Every language, I think Bishop Ron talked about some different languages earlier. All means all in every language. Every single, all means all. Like Asher, we may have difficult days ahead. We may be in difficult days right now. I'll tell you what, when you're tormented and you're having a hard time, it is hard. It is tough. And you don't always feel like most people understand. They may give you some good scriptures and quote the whole entire Bible to you when you're talking to them, and you're like, I don't feel any better <laughs> because you're having a tough time. 
cry when I cry and laugh when I laugh, Scripture says, right? Be supportive. But there is a time to quote it, but not all the time, right? You know, there's days we have toil and trials and all that good stuff. Days of temptation, right? <laughs> uh, that's just a battle. That's one of those two or three things, right? It's a temptation. When I, uh, I took somebody, uh, uh, Bishop Ron is aware because he's the one that really kind of orchestrated the ball rolling this, but I took a guy to, to get help that was in drugs and alcohol some years back. I took him into this place for a night or two, and we were going to take him somewhere else after that. But this lady behind the counter, she's like, she talked with a real, hey, how are you doing? Like her voice was really messed up and uh, you couldn't hardly understand her. And it was just, you could tell her, her it, it seemed like she, I don't know, smoked like 10 packs a day for her whole life. You, it was a real raspy or tough voice. And she said, you know what? She says, I did crack for so many years, you know, because we're talking about restoration, all that stuff I was talking to her about. She said, I, barring a miracle, I'm as restored as I can be because I did so much damage. She said, you know, she says, I have empathy for the alcoholic. And I said, really? She goes, she goes, every time they go into a convenience store, there it is. She said, I at least had to break the law and work for it to get what I needed. <laughs> I had to work for it, you know. I had to go out and sneak around, you know. But theirs is they go in to get a big gulp, and they're like, there it is. Now they got it iced down right in front of you if you're battling with it. Like, all right, <laughs> well, I'll only get one. Well, they got them about that big now, you know. <laughs> I only had one. <laughs> you, you ever heard that, Jeff? I only had two today. Well, they were 54 ounces, though, right? That's 108, that's 12, that's a lot of, that's a lot of beers. Days of tears. Here's, here's some promises for every occasion. God knows the future from the foundation of the world. He knew you and I were going to go through what we've gone through. And I know now, and he always knew, that he would always be there for us. He would always be there for you. Even when you look back and go, man, that was hard. I'll tell you what, I can look back and go, man, that was some tough childhood years, Right? Talked about it before. It was, but he was with me and he loved me, right? Isn't that awesome? He cared about me the whole way. And now I have a greater revelation because I was spared and I got to, you know, go on with life and all that. And our siblings are all, we're, I tell you what, my brother and I talk about it and we are so excited that him and I get along so good. You know, we're just at all because we hear at other people and families that are just at odds. How are they doing? I hate him. <laughs> I want to, well, you know, they're at odds. Somebody got to step in and, reconcile, at least give it a shot, right? Do their best. I tell you what, I am very fortunate because us five siblings, uh, we all get along great and I'm all their favorite, of course. And we're all good with that. None of them in here, right? Maybe not really. We all love each other a lot. He knows all the secrets, all the stuff, all the persecution we've gone through in the past, others have gone through, the things that we will go through, that he'll be there for us. How can you look at that as a glorious time? Well, what you can look at is the glorious relationship with Jesus Christ. I want to be able to handle it better when people, you know, not to be happy about it, would reject Christ and talk to me a certain way, right? I can still pray about them. I can still try to have an end. I had somebody say something before to me, and they're like, blah, blah, blah. you know, they said something cussing, and we're talking real bad. And I said, well, let me make sure I understand this right. You didn't say no. I said, is there still a possibility you might come to church on Sunday? And they're like, no, there's not a possibility. All right, I just wanted to make sure. And then they kind of laughed. They laughed a little bit, right? <laughs> so I thought, I may have an inroad now. <laughs> Doesn't always go the way we want, right? It surely does not go the way we want all the time, right? Not at all. He knows your situation with your battling with, whether it's, you know, addiction, uh, marital problems, financial, any of that kind of stuff. He wants to heal us, and he wants to strengthen us. Amen. My second point is God knows the limit of your strength. You know, one of the reasons he knows this is how to equip you. You're weak in this area. Okay, pray about it. God, make that my strength. Amen? If it doesn't go away immediately, keep praying for it. Make that my strength. There are some people, they got zero compassion for people. They just want to rip your head off when you bring up the, the worst or the best thing. How are you? Shut up. I don't worry about how I am. I could go back to that deep personality thing I did right here. Don't you worry about it. I won't worry about it. Okay. I'm sorry I brought it up. Growing up, my family was not equipped. He knows how to equip us. We got to ask. We got to get equipped. They were far from equipped for any of this stuff. With all the horrible things that went on, the alcoholism. These are alcoholics. This is all they did, right? And they think it's cute to see other little kids drink or take a little beer. Or, uh, but that, the, the abuse, the violence, and all that type of stuff, they didn't know how to handle any of it. They stayed in it. They were not in it to win it. 
they were in it to just bear and grin it and suffer. And, and any time they moved on to another relationship, same situation, right? My poor mother was, was, was beat by most all these guys. Pains me to say that even though I can talk about it. Pains me to think about it. But I'm so glad she's in heaven and out of pain, right? You know, for years, I didn't say anything to my siblings. For years, I did to my brother. For years. Because I didn't think they could handle it. But the day she gave her heart to the Lord, two weeks later, she's in with heaven. Uh, and I'm thinking, and I, I believe it's a revelation from the Lord. I'm like, there's no assurance if he would have spared her life that day that she would have stayed into the kingdom. I'm more glad for that than I am for having my mother. And believe me, I love my mother. But I'm so glad that she got to go to heaven. And she's waiting for her little Davy boy. <laughs> she's up there. Probably, doesn't, I don't know what, what's going on up there, but I can't wait to see her. Grandma and the others that have gone before me. And we all have others that have gone before us. Uh, we have much to accomplish before we leave planet Earth, hopefully, right? To go up there. But I was excited. I finally talked to my brother about that one time. He goes, you know, I kind of thought of that. But I didn't want to tell them like after one week, well, praise God, you know, it wasn't the right time. It wasn't the right situation. Uh, they weren't ready to hear that. So we know our family was not equipped. How do we get equipped? All the ways we heard about today. We surrender. Boy, that's a hard word, right? Nobody likes to surrender. Well, let me let him be in charge. Let me let her be in charge. You're a, that's not always easy to do, right? Well, let me relinquish it and let you be in charge, Lord. And then that marriage can be awesome and compatible and build one another up. Or, or the future bride or the future husband, it'd be the, the ones we want. Because you know parents are always praying for that for their kids. I got that from Eric Jones when his kid was about this tall. He's already praying for their spouse. And you're like, oh, no, not my girl. My girls, are... okay, they are going to get married one day, right? So I started praying for them, right? God hadn't forgot that. That's right. I may have some hard times along the way where I've been, in my world, been devastated. But God has not forgot that. He has not forgotten those prayers like incense. Later, like incense lifted up to his nostrils. Amen? Yep. So that's pleasing to the Lord. I like that. I want to please the Lord, right? I want to please my family as well. You know, there was a time that I thought I was prepared. and We were, uh, y'all remember Bishop and uh, Prophet Eric when we went to Zakaland? Eric says, we'll always have Zakaland. So we go there, and you know, he opens up his suitcase, and I'm like, man, I think he had it alphabetized. <laughs> I said, does that say Monday, Tuesday, we and that, you got AM and PM, what are you doing? And he got his shoes, you know, with those, what are those things called that keep, makes you keep the shape? Shoehorn. See, I don't even know these foreign words. What is it? Shoe tree? Shoe tree. That just doesn't sound right, does it? Shoe tree. That sounds like a Chinese dish. I want some shoe tree. Okay. So, you know, I'll mine up. And I thought, oh, man, I brought one black shoe, one brown shoe, and I actually think I got a tennis shoe over there. All, you know, he was prepared. He was walking around looking good. <laughs> and him and I are sitting there one night after he, we, uh, we prophes he prophesied, I prophesied some, and we prayed for some people. And him and I are sitting over here, and Robert Duran's at the, end of the other end of the church, right? And some guy's talking to him. Robert Duran is uh, interpreting. And so they keep pointing at him and I. That, and you know, he's the only black guy. Hold on. Pecan tan, man. Kind of like today. Things ain't much different in Liberty Hill. <laughs> the only pecan tan, man. And I'm the only, I'm going to stick with white guy for me. <laughs> the only, so we're, and then the rest are like, you know, hundreds of Hispanic guys. And some ladies. A, a lot of them, right? And, uh, and I was, and they kept going, that guy right over there. That guy right over there. And Robert Drain's asking him in Spanish, going, which guy are you talking about? And him and I, we're not bilingual, but we finally hear the word negro <laughs> in Spanish. And Eric looked over and goes, what did he call me? <laughs> I said, there's only two of us, Eric. <laughs> Keep it down, brother. Keep it down. Everything will be fine. And I said, and most of them are that tall. We can outrun them if we know they're coming at us. <laughs> we got them. And see, I, I felt pretty confident then. But later I find out that this man could run a 4 three forty, right? That's why he smiled so big, because he's thinking, like, I only got to outrun one guy. And that's the white guy <laughs> over here. A couple of strikes against me right there. You know, because I run like a 5'3 if I get to jump on somebody. But, and, I, and he's probably thinking just like that bear commercial, right? You only got to outrun one person and not get attacked by the bear. Or the hundreds of guys in this case. But God wants us to be prepared, right? To be prepared mentally, spiritually, emotionally. How in the world can we get D, all the above? Even though I only said two or three. All the above, we get it by fully surrender to the king, right? And I tell you what I need to do more, even though you can do it in your phone. Open this bad boy up a little bit. Huh. What's Genesis? 
No, it must be in the beginning. That's it. I don't know. To get familiar with it, right? Yeah. To go, man, I tell you what, I may not have them memorize all of them, but they're in here, right? The years of looking and, re- and uh, researching, and I want to understand the scriptures more, though, right? I believe each year as we submit, we learn more. I heard somebody years ago, I think I've learned all I can. I said, well, you're in trouble then, right? I didn't even have to call Bishop Ron on that one and say, what do you think? There, you're in trouble. If you think you got it, you know it all, and you like Barney all humble, <laughs> there could be a problem. He also knows your breaking point. Anybody ever thought this, this is it? I tell you what, growing up, my family, I don't know, I, I learned the word nervous breakdown with a lot of them. You know, the, the drinking, the depression, the anxiety, the fighting, and this and that. Had relatives, they don't even open up their curtains during the day. They like the dark. They want to be depressed. And they were. It was bad. It was not good. But he knew, and he knows, our breaking point as well. If they, my family, your family, anybody, would have been equipped, they would have had the answer. Right? We don't always know how to get that, do we? We're like, well, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to go to church. Well, don't go to church. (laughs) And you reap accordingly. Come and get the fresh, inherent word of God, right? Get to hear the prophetic, and you're like, man, I want to feel alive and hear the alive God for today. I was Googling all this, and I got all sidetracked reading stuff, 10 reasons why to go to church, and one of them was not to meet a hot babe. It wasn't in there. (laughs) I want to go. That's where all the good ones are, even though I messed up. That's where I'm going, right? You can also meet bad people in the building, right? Anywhere. God wants us to come here to surrender, to learn more, and to also bless other people as well, right? To be able to speak into their lives. Sometimes that can be a hug or just let them know, you know, I've been thinking about whatever it might be. Something from the heart. Because God speaks from the heart, right? Hmm. He will never allow us to go beyond that point, even though many of us felt like we have, right? Know those days when you feel at the end of yourself. <laughs> I got a lot of stuff here. You know, I'll tell you, one, one time when it was the end of myself, for, uh, to me, this is my, this is my tough, tough time for my wife and I, right? For 14 years, we tried to have children. Those of y'all that are quick in numbers, that's about 5,110 days. Three leap years, it's about 5,113. So 5,000 plus days wanting kids and getting discouragement from people in the world, right? It's okay, don't worry. Okay, thank you. It doesn't, they don't always help you feel better, right? Then they would tell you about the 200-year-old lady in there that had a baby. You're like, wasn't she really old? That was not encouraging. None of y'all did that, by the way. And then when we heard about, was it Hannah? Now, Hannah, still in her prime. <laughs> we like the Hannah story better, right? I could relate that. Hannah was probably pretty good looking, pretty hot. <laughs> Married to my wife, pretty good looking, pretty hot. So I'm good with that story. But the other ones were like, well, I had some people try. It took me six months. I'm like, you're not hearing me. <laughs> I got 28 of those six months. That's a lot. So God wants to encourage us and strengthen us. And he did that. And then a miracle came my way. And I tell you what, I know the Holy Spirit did it. But Bishop Ron, most everything I talk about was he played a big part of. Amen. You know, when this came up, he said, lay a fleece out before the Lord. For the Lord. And I said, what's a fleece? And then he said, lay a fleece out, do this, pray. And then, boom, it fell into place. Praise the Lord. And he's been there for all those too. Amen. Eric Jones too. Giving me some words, giving us some words of encouragement. <laughs> Katie's like two, and I'm handing her over the, over the table while we're eating at this Mexican restaurant. And she's pointing at some crayons, right? And Eric Jones is sitting there, and she goes, color, color. He goes, what did she say? <laughs> color, color. She's pointing. I'm like, over here. <laughs> That's the truth, really. <laughs> what have you been training her? I went, Katie. <laughs> I know you're only two, sweetie, but <laughs> that was so funny. He's like, what did she? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what she said. I, I know Lori's been working her, with her behind the scenes. <laughs> I never teach her that. <laughs> feels weird to call her Lori. I never call her Lori. <laughs> got all these nick- you got nicknames for your wives, your husbands? Well, the husbands is like, it's probably not as good. So, <laughs> Kella? Okay. So you may be tired, nervous, bewildered, all that, right? Tempted, discouraged, any of that. Ready to give up, right? And you've heard this in life before, right? 
You may be right on the threshold of your miracle. You may be right there getting ready to step into the promised land and you don't know it. And you feel torment and pain. The enemy's not going to give up. I don't do most of my focus on him at all, but I will point him out. He's not, he, he's, they say a worthy adversary, but Jesus is more worthy, right? So if I don't focus on all the demonic all the time, though it's there, I focus on my relationship with the Lord, how I can grow, how I can get stronger through the word, how I can pray and have a better prayer life and do that without being super religious and just enjoy my relationship with the king. You know, I used to be like, man, I'd go back there and pray and go, start me the stopwatch. I want to spend at least this much time with the Lord. I got out of that. <laughs> I'm not like that anymore. <laughs> Lord likes it when I say that a lot. I'm not like that anymore. Good. Keep it up. Do that some more. And I don't know if you read my, your Bible, but this is in the King James, the New King James, one of my favorites, the message, New Living, in, I mean, all of the above, right? <laughs> there is some demonic opposition out there, right? And oppression. And guess what? Demon possession. Well, that's, it's in your Bible, too. You can Google it when you're in doubt. When in doubt, go, okay, Google, I think he's wrong. Don't start off like that. It's not going to give you the right thing. You just ask. You can look it up. It's all over the place. So best of all, he cares. My goodness, I'm talking a long time. The last point is God compensates for our weakness with his strength. He promises strength for the weak. And I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Anybody, anybody that has a weakness, if there's somebody in your life that really cares about you, that really cares, they got that inroad, they will point it out to you, right? And I'll tell you this. Say the first part jokingly. Bishop Ron has pointed some weaknesses out that I've had before, right? He comes in one time, he's like, you got a minute? <laughs> How long? He pointed them out. Why? To make me better. To sharpen me, to strengthen me in the kingdom, right? You don't first go all the time like, praise the Lord, I'm, I'm bad at that too. You don't always think like that. You know, you're like, oh, I'm not you're, but, but in reality, it ought to be, thank you, God, that you have somebody that's cared about me for this November be 20 years as well, that has wanted to speak into my life, that has cared enough about me, and hadn't given up on me when I faltered, right? And another thing he's done, he's also praised me on the good things. It didn't take as long, but he did. <laughs> it's like, well, you're, <laughs> you're pretty good at carrying that old Bible around looking like, like you read it a lot. That's the one a few months ago I told you it was new and I laid it out in the rain, remember? <laughs> to make it look old. Make me look like a veteran Christian. <laughs> you ever seen him show up to the thing that I... How are you? You want me to give you a little scripture? You want me to tell you some promises about God? No, I don't. Strength. He will give us strength. We're, we are weak. He is strong. Our prayer ought to always be, Lord, I know I'm flawed in that area. Please deliver me. Please help me, Lord. Whatever it is, please bring me to the point to care enough to do it. You know, there are some people that don't like stuff, and they really don't. I say, well, they don't dislike it enough yet. Amen. Right? They're still giving in to whatever. They don't dislike it enough. Because if they did, they would fully surrender to the king. We would all see that glow, <laughs> the change, right? There would be an awesome change there. He shall strengthen your heart. That's in Psalms, because our heart needs strengthening because of problems. Shall renew their strength, Isaiah. That means it needs renewing. He wants to renew your strength. How in the world can it really get renewed? We've heard it for years sometimes, right? He will renew it through the word, through full submission. Strength, Lord, give me strength. Give me strength to fully submit, to fully submit to you. We're not going to like everything in life, but we can fully submit to the Lord. Things will change. The paradigm, the way we look at things will change, right? You know, because we're all, uh, I got to say, married, some of y'all are married to uh, or related to or have friends that are truly flawed and drive you crazy, right? It's just the way it is for most people. Uh, so God wants us to be able to strengthen ourselves and even know how to pray for them. I've had people that I couldn't even pray their name when I was younger because I, I hated them so bad. That wasn't good. I was forgive and forget, Lord, but I want a piece of that guy. That's what I thought. I added that little addendum there, right? That was for my stepdad. I, I, I want to I get even, Lord. <laughs> yeah. Dang it, it's not in here. Vengeance is mine, saith the king of kings. Not the king David, not, or not, not any of it. I'll tell you a uh, uh, couple of things here to, to think you're ready. One time the girls, they asked me, there's this track, it's 11 laps. 
weird number, to make a mile, right? So at 5,280 feet for a mile, okay? I know y'all like numbers, I can tell. 5,000 feet, you Googling right now, probably. And we did two laps. So one of them is gonna run, come around and tag her sister, and they're gonna smoke me, they say. And I'm thinking, there's no way that's gonna happen. I know how fast I am and I know how fast they are. So they said, all right, let's do it. So I take off and I stay just in front of the, the one that I think is the fastest a little bit, and I thought, well, when they tag off. So, <laughs> and the, the one behind me the whole way on the second lap, she's yelling, move over, move over. I'm thinking, oh, I got the right of way of the track, I ain't moving over. You know, so we come around and, 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 and I win, and they were devastated. <laughs> And so, why did I think I could win? Because I practiced. I practiced running. Not as good as I was, so I don't bring it up to them anymore. You know, but then they said, hey, let's do a rematch. This was the same day. They said, and can we borrow your headset, you know, to, to run with it? And I'm like, and the first thing, I said, you're going to do it and hand it off? I got ready to say, you know that will cost you some time, but I thought, no, nah, I won't say anything. <laughs> so they did it again. They're like, <laughs> and I'm just... <laughs> Why did that not work? Because they were not prepared, right? They were not ready, right? So we have to be ready and be prepared. If we want to get to a certain place anywhere in life, whether it be physical, right? We know our limitations probably, right? We're not always smart enough to know that, but we usually do. A couple of years ago, I wanted, I wanted to bench press, and I said, I know I can get this number because there's nobody to spot me, and I'll make myself get it. And for me, it was a lot of weight. And I remember, huh, nobody in this room with me, right? And I'm like right here, and I'm like, my hands start going. I was like, ah! <laughs> ah! People in the other building could hear me go, ah! <laughs> and I did everything I could to roll it back, ah! Screaming. And it hurt. And they had the little hooks there that I rolled it on and got it on. I'm like, ah, ah. yeah, I'll never do that again. <laughs> you know, I learned, I'm going to have some spotters next time. Now I go to the gym that's got these little things that it catches it for you, right? You can go, you can leave it right there and go. You know, but I, I, I learned, I got it two weeks later, but I had a spot. <laughs> I thought I was ready, but I wasn't ready. That was a physical thing. God wants to equip us spiritually, right? To really walk and glide in the spirit and hear from him, right? Man, my daughter's going through this. Well, this is why the Lord says, speak to her this way. Don't go, you need to quit it. You need to do like I've been telling you for the last five years, even though it ain't worked, Okay. He wants to give you creative ideas to do something, right? And to love on them, not exasperate them. Anybody ever done it? Don't raise your hand. It's rhetorical. Most of us have, and we don't want to do that. I'll tell you what, if I do, I feel horrendous. I feel terrible. It's okay, Dad. No, it's not okay. I apologize. Well, it's, it's still not okay, but I accept. Oh, thank you. I feel horrible. Thank you, Lord, that I feel horrible for doing the wrong thing, right? If you feel good, like, well, she had to come in, they shouldn't have done, shouldn't have done it, or I, you're in the wrong. Let's be in the right. Let's be ready. By faith, we can get enough strength for each day, for every single day, right? Every single day. Hmm. His strength is plenty for all we face. My conclusion, everything Jesus went through, he went through because he loves us, because he cares for us. His death, burial, and resurrection, all that was because he loved us. The resurrection is awesome. We can be resurrected in our life. Those things that are dormant, that you think are dead, that can never be resurrected, that you ain't got a chance, I got about a 0% chance or much little above that, that is an incorrect way to think. We think, God, through you, all things are possible. Not through me, not through her, not through, a, through you, all things are possible. Do we both want to be obedient? Absolutely. Somebody sometimes has to take that stand in whatever your situation is. His power is sufficient. Amen? Amen. Many in the world do not know that he is the source, the ultimate source, the answer to every situation. I will end with this scripture here. Where can we find our strength? Of course, we know that's Jesus Christ, but Psalms, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. That's because trouble comes. Comes to you at the workplace, comes to you in your marriage, comes to you with your kids, comes to you with this, comes to you. He is our strength during trouble. So that means we say, Lord, I'm in trouble. I need you. I need you a lot. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. So that means when I got a bad situation, right, I'm not shrieking going that way. I'm running to the Lord. Lord, I need you. I have got to change. I want my mind right, my mind clean, my heart pure, all the above, all the things that we can think of. I do not want to keep battling with this problem. Lord, deliver me. Help me. I need strength from you, Lord. Do not grieve, 
for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. That means you've grieved. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. How can you keep joy all the time if we're in the world that we're in? It is having a good, awesome relationship with Jesus Christ by saying, there's nothing else I'm going to do but serve you. All these other things, I don't need to focus on them all the time, even though I need to address them. I get my strength from you. You are the King of Kings, Lord. I fully submit to you. I want every part of my life to be examined by you and then speak to me, Lord. Tell me where I'm doing okay and tell me where I need to change. Let me know where I'm doing good. Let me know where I'm flawed. Because you know what? We're all flawed. So that's a great thing to think. Lord, help me where I'm flawed. Well, I can't get them to change. Welcome to the club, brother and sister, right? But he can and prayer can. Prayer needs to change us. So once again, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Bishop Ron, do we... You want me to close? Okay. Well, if you would stand to your feet, please. The Lord wants us to feel not like fake excitement, but the Holy Spirit wants to come into your life more, if he's there, more, or for the first time, whatever it is, desperately, right? Give us a pure mind and a pure heart, O oh Lord. Help us to do that in the world we live in, Lord God. You know what? They've always had bad things going on when you read back in the Bible. I don't know about you, but there's some pretty atrocious things that happened in my Bible. God wants you to know that this is nothing new under the sun. So, Lord, I just pray that we would be strengthened, that we would have strength for today, for every day, that we would feel your power, your love, and we would know, Lord God, that you are a beacon. You are a light to the world. You are a light to us, Father, that the joy is ours, that the strength is ours, and that we should run towards you, Lord God during our situation. I pray blessings over everybody. I thank you for what you're doing in our lives, for the mentors in our lives, for the things that are going on, Lord God, for the turnaround that people have been praying about that have children, Lord God, that are going through the turnaround that we heard from you, Lord, from you, Lord, today. I thank you for that personally, Lord God, for, for us, and thank you for the turnaround that could come in our individual lives and our marriages to be strengthened, Lord God. Thank you so much for that. And help us to be strong when we walk out in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you.